Chalk Talk is brought to you by Isolite, the emergency lighting experts. Stay educated, my friends. Good morning, everyone. My name is Greg Keel. I'm the Western Regional Sales Manager for Isolite, along with Matt Bird, who's our Eastern Regional Sales Manager. Thank you for joining us for June's Chalk Talk. Today's topic is very interesting. Um, it's a topic that has become more prevalent in the lighting industry as a whole. Our host today is Evan Ackman, our Director of Product Development. You'll be able to see his screen as he'll be screen sharing and, and handling the Chalk Talk today. The topic, as you can see, is battery packs versus inverters. Uh, without further ado, I'll hand it off to Evan. Great, thanks, Greg. Uh, as Greg mentioned, our topic today is particularly the comparison between battery packs and inverters, uh, really focused on cost. We've spent a lot of other Chalk Talks talking about the sort of the differences in technology, but I think that you know talking about cost and the trade-offs is really important. And so we're going to go through this in you know, our, our traditional style of doing it in three sections. We'll talk about background, uh, really high level decision points that you might utilize to say, I got to use this versus the other. We'll talk about the products that are going to form the backbone of this comparison. We'll talk about the straightforward bomb costs, and then we'll also roll into why maybe that's not the perfect way to, uh, to do the math on making this decision. So we'll talk about the assumptions associated with installation and maintenance. We'll talk about how that goes into real numbers, like actual installed cost numbers, uh, and why they're a little bit different than the, the bomb cost numbers. We'll touch on the, uh, the maintenance implications long term. Uh, we won't talk about product replacement in that, but we will talk about uh, how much easier it is to, to manage an inverter. And then at the end, we'll talk about when, uh, when this analysis falls apart, some things that may you know, change the outcome of the analysis. We'll, uh, we'll get into that one page of document that's gonna be sent out and then we'll throw our contact information up there and so you can get more information should you need it. So the, the brass tax is we're trying to make a decision at the low end, sort of all the way down in the small inverters of, you know, where does it make sense to use LED emergency drivers, the battery packs versus, you know, particularly mini inverters. I think that as you get up into bigger inverters, the advantages skew so hard towards the inverter side that it's not as interesting a problem, but here it's a little bit more interesting. And, you know, the high level uh, decision process here would be, you're going to be better off with a battery pack if you've got a very small job with very few emergency fixtures, you know, in that sort of three, four, five uh, kind of number. Uh, if you have really high electrical labor costs uh, for union reasons, for your jurisdiction reasons, because it's, you know, on staff engineering, uh, that's going to drive you towards the battery pack. Uh, if you don't want to get into some of the, uh, the wiring uh, requirements for the inverter, that's going to drive you over towards the battery pack. Um, you know, a retrofit scenario where you've got existing fluorescent inverters, uh, then that's an obvious battery pack type job. Uh, the inverter is going to have an advantage when you start to get into higher fixture counts or larger jobs. And that number is actually, it says large there, but really that's after you get to sort of fixture five, six, seven all the way up. If you're trying to integrate with more advanced lighting control, zero to 10 volt dolly phase control, you're, you're gonna wanna be uh, in inverter land there. And if your goal is to really reduce the yearly maintenance cost uh, to the maximum extent that you can, that's where you're gonna be in inverter land. And so these are the general uh, decision sort of criteria that you would use to pick between these two things. And we're gonna spend the next 10 minutes really rifling through what the sort of the background and the data behind that is. And so the products that we're going to be comparing here will be our EMP emergency LED drivers, uh, our IMI, the particularly the 125 and 250, and then grayed out on the right side there, uh, the E3. The E3 is where you, you start to get into, um, you know, into the bigger inverters. So you're going to see it on the graphs, but really what our focus here is today is on the emergency drivers, and the, the IMI. And as a part of this analysis, we've used our emergency driver uh, to sort of back into some costs and, uh, and feature sets. But I don't, the analysis doesn't really change based off of using our driver versus somebody else's, uh, somebody else's driver. So just keep that in mind as we go through. So I mentioned that the, the bomb cost would be the first thing that we're going to look at. And, you know, it, it does start to uh, sort of 
favor the inverter, but you get into a little bit more nuance at this point. Yeah, these are uh, what the driver costs will be, but that's not installed. So there's an electrician that's going to have to come through and do this. Yeah, this is what the cost per fixture is on uh, the IMI. And you can see that we, uh, we broke it down by seven watt fixtures, 12 watt fixtures and 25 watt fixtures. That's really just to accommodate the fact that, you know, the drivers are very particular in terms of the fixtures they want to go into. Um, and so we tried to mirror that uh, complexity really through the product line. And you know, this is good, and it's a good way to look at it if you're just, you only care about the actual PO value of these devices. Um, this doesn't really account for things like, you know, breaker selection in the E3, option selection in the IMI. Um, the EMPs are pretty well set, but it also doesn't account for a, the most important thing in the job, which is you know, how do you actually get this thing into an installation and have it up and running. And so the total installed cost is really what we want to focus on here today. And the reason why this analysis is so different is because the work that is being done to get these into, into the field are, are they're fundamentally different, right? If you're going to field install the EMP driver uh, and you're going to field install the inverter, uh, maybe it's a wash in that instance, but that's not how the market has, uh, has gone. So the comparison point is you want to buy the emergency driver pre-installed from the fixture manufacturer, and you want to compare that to having the electrician field wire the inverter. And that's really where you get into some of the nuance. And we've made a bunch of assumptions as a part of this analysis, and I will be the first one to tell you that you know, the average is never truly achieved here. These numbers are pretty good, but you know, we, we've taken the butter and spread it over a fairly large piece of toast. This is gonna vary jurisdictionally. It's gonna vary by job type, but we think this is a, a good baseline analysis. And so the way that we've considered this is, you know, getting a battery pack pre-installed from a fixture manufacturer is basically gonna be, you know, $125 adder. You know, maybe it's a little bit more, maybe it's a little bit less depending on the fixture manufacturer and the fixture itself. But that number, you know, seems to be what we've seen uh, in the field generally. The other thing that is important to remember when you talk about inverters is you also have this emergency lighting control device requirement. So the thing that's out there determining whether the fixtures are in normal architectural mode or if they're in full-on emergency mode, that requires an additional device. One of these ELCDs, you know, the transfer switch, ALCR, bypass switch, shunt relay, whatever you want to call it. It's going to require these and we've taken a guess at what the average number of these things would be. So we've said that it's one ELCD per 10 fixtures that are on the inverter. And that number is it's okay. I mean, you're going to have some rooms that obviously have less, but then you get up into maybe an open office space where there's going to be a lot more. So you have to consider that that number can shift around a little bit. Uh, we've taken a guess at labor and materials, and we backed into this from you know, a number of jobs that we reviewed. That covers what the electrician is going to have to do to bring a new piece of pipe uh, from the inverter out to the first fixture, as well as to uh, in between the other emergency fixtures, their time, and then the materials um, that they're going to use. We've estimated that at about $40 per fixture, sort of all in. Uh, we've also taken into account the fact that you have to derate, or you don't have to derate, but the best practice is to uh, underload the inverter a little bit, so 85-90% of the, uh, the rated capacity. We've done that as a part of the all-in analysis. A couple things that we aren't considering though, because they just end up muddying the waters so much, is the project management cost of having different fixture types on site. When you're going with the driver, you know, some fixtures are gonna be special and they're gonna be marked differently versus the traditional just architectural fixtures. There's a cost associated with keeping those things separate and making sure they go into the right spot. We've not estimated that. We're, we're not the experts on what that's going to be, honestly. So we've just ignored that. But it does exist, and it, uh, it puts the, it, the uh, drivers in a little bit of a disadvantage. The other thing that we've also not done, uh, this applies more at the E3 level and on up. We're not really taking advantage of the self-documenting features of the inverter. We're still saying that you have to go and observe the self-diagnostic output. Um, but let's just show what the, the numbers kind of fared out. So you can see immediately that the numbers are higher, right? I mean, obviously, 
um, you know, the additional cost of the, um, the pipe and wire, the electrical install, the emergency lighting control devices, that's going to, to play into adding, you know, almost, um, you know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, 70 bucks uh, per zone on the uh, inverter. Uh, and again, these numbers are cost per fixture associated with it. So those numbers kind of go up, but they actually, uh, they don't go up as fast as the EMP driver. So you can see that, you know, the seven, 12 and 25 watt numbers there, 243, 254 and 313. Again, that's to have it pre-installed. There's another nuance here. These inverters are fully loaded uh, and you can see the relative numbers here on a cost per fixture and you can back into where the crossover points are. But in reality, down at the, the 125, that number is really sort of at four and five fixtures, you're gonna be better off going with the inverter. Uh, when you get into the E3, it's sort of 10, 11, 12 fixtures. Those, uh, those numbers will, will be crossed over. But you know, generally speaking, these are numbers that you can go to bat for if you're trying to just get to a rough number of what it's gonna to take to, to get emergency lighting done on a job. These are, these are good numbers that you can use uh, to sort of generate that. Count the fixtures, multiply by these numbers. It's a pretty good way to get to a budgetary number. The other piece to this puzzle, the other side of the coin is maintenance assumptions. And these are similarly hard to get to a real number, uh, maybe even a little bit more difficult than getting to an installed cost from a bomb cost. Um, but it's important for the, uh, the facilities team, the customers to understand that there's obligations for testing. As a reminder, we've talked about it in a thousand chalk talks, but the obligation is every month you have to do a 30 second test. Uh, every year you have to do a full 90 minute test. Self-diagnostics on the inverter, for example, can, can take care of initiating that test for you, but you still have to go document it. And so the things that we've considered here are like the relative travel time between going to inverters to observe that self-diagnostics versus going between the emergency drivers. Um, it's going to take longer to get between inverters generally because they're going to be in electrical closets. Uh, the um, the, uh, the documentation is going to take time more than the testing. Testing can just be pressing a button. Documentation can be... Um, you know, writing it all down, the inverters are self-diagnostic, and then the labor rate is gonna be at like 60 bucks. Um, yeah, so that's just the number. Again, it may not be what you see in the field, but the numbers fair it out because you can get so much more capacity on the inverter, the maintenance cost per fixture per year goes way down. So you can see that, you know, on a per fixture by fixture basis, if you've got fixtures on an IMI, you know, depending on um, what their wattage is and how many you've got on there, you could be down at two, three, five dollars per year to maintain it. Uh, generally speaking, the cost per year of a, of a fixture with uh, the battery backup is going to be about 24 bucks. And that doesn't really change based off of the wattage because you're always just kind of running back and forth um, between all of these devices. This analysis can fall apart in some things. There are other things that, um, that, that contribute to the analysis. The maintenance costs are going to be relatively stable. Those aren't going to move a lot around so much. And they make sense because it's just you have less devices that you have to physically maintain when you're going with an inverter based system versus going around and doing the red dot scavenger hunt uh, throughout the facility. Uh, so that kind of makes sense. But the installed costs could change a little bit. So more small zones may require more ELC de ELCD devices. Uh, that'll drive the per zone cost of the inverter up. Uh, you know, on the other side of that coin is if you've got just large zones that are doing big open office areas, that's going to drive the cost per zone down because you're able to amortize that ELCD uh, over more zones. Uh, labor rates obviously have a more significant effect on inverters. Um, again, we, we took a stab at a number that we think represents sort of generally what it looks like across the states. Um, the advantage still falls to the inverter. You'd have to get to pretty high labor rates before there's an inversion of preference here. Um, but keep in mind that it does change what the numbers look like. Uh, I mentioned the project management costs of battery packs. Uh, that can be uh, a nuisance. Uh, having multiple fixtures that look the same but act differently on site can be a challenge. And then the thing that really swings the analysis uh, towards the inverters is considering things like exit signs and potentially non-lighting loads. 
uh, that can be, be hanging off the inverter because it's just AC power. So if you've got a, a facility that also has, you know, ventilation requirements because it's an area of refuge and you can hang all the exit signs off of the inverter, then that's going to heavily shift the analysis over in that direction. This, uh, this information uh, is all presented on a one pager that's going to be sent out uh, as a part of this. We're also going to get it up on the web page this week. Uh, I have a kind of a monstrous spreadsheet that, that backed into all of this data. And look, if you guys uh, you know, have questions or you think it doesn't apply or you want to do an analysis for maybe a little bit of a different look, different fixtures, different products, um, you know, we'd be certainly happy to sort of walk you guys through that. Again, my name is Evan Ackman. Uh, Greg and Matt are on the call. They're your regional sales managers. If you want to dig into this and get, you know, maybe on a job by job basis, a little bit more detail on, on what it might take to, to make this comparison, we'd be happy to do it for you. We actually just did one this week for battery packs versus, you know, larger, uh, larger inverters. So I certainly appreciate your time. We've kept this to, you know, 15 and a half minutes. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, feel free to throw your questions in the Q&A or in the chat and, and we'll, uh, we'll handle them. Otherwise, have a good week.